let's talk about an electrical view of the body. We are electrical beings. Now this harkens back to some of the pioneers in this field from Albert St. Georgie and the idea of bioelectricity, Robert Becker and his idea of these electrical charges. He was really looking at the idea of limb generation in frogs and salamanders and how salamander limb regeneration was really dictated by this electrical charge and they could manipulate what was happening as if the electricity, the electrical field was holding some kind of information. And there's a way that we can look at the body as a flow of electrical charge. Going back to this idea of chemistry and whether something is a oxidant or a reducer, whether something is holding energy and has energy to donate, or whether something is pulling energy away. And when we look at the body, when we look at pain, when we look at inflammation, when we look at chronic disease, when we look at cancer, there's a perspective where we see that these are all deficiencies in electrical charge. We run on a net negative charge. When you look at a cell, it has a negative 70 millivolt charge. And that's the same for the cells in our liver to the neurons in our brain. They're all running on this net negative charge. And when we see a decrease in that electrical charge, we see pain. We see inflammation, we see symptoms and disease start to ensue. So there's a way of looking at the body as this incredible movement of electrons and protons, negatively charged electrons and positively charged protons. This idea that when we are energy deficient in an area, we can shuttle electrons to that area. When we're looking at mitochondria, mitochondria that we learned about in school as this jelly bean shaped organelle in all the cells creating ATP. Well, that jelly bean shape is a mitochondrion in distress, in a danger signal. Their normal state is stretched out. They are stretched out. They're sharing electrons with other mitochondria, with other organelles in the cell. They can even leave the cell and create chains where they are donating electrons and mitochondria to other cells in need of that energy. This incredible perspective of the capacity of our body to run on electrical charge. We're so used to thinking of the body as a chemical, mechanical being, where health is a description of chemical balance or mechanical alignment. Now we know that to be true, but that only explains some of what's happening. This idea that the flow of electrons in the body, the flow of charge in the body is helping to dictate health, brings in a, an expanded understanding that helps us address health in a much more cohesive way. We have this collagen matrix that extends from our most external layers of skin all the way down to our internal organs. And this Collagen matrix is completely lined with liquid crystal water, with easy water. Discovered by Professor Gerald Pollack out of the University of Washington, this water, as soon as it comes in contact with collagen, it takes on a different structure. It becomes more gel-like, more viscous, and it can hold energy. It can hold energy of light, sound, frequency information, and collagen is a semiconductor. It can hold, store, capture, and transmit electrical current. So you have this semiconductor of collagen completely surrounded with this water that is negatively charged as it touches these water loving surfaces like collagen. It takes on a different structure. It becomes more organized, more gel like, more viscous. It builds in the presence of infrared energy and it 
takes on a negative charge. It pushes out a positively charged hydrogen or proton and creates what I call a a water battery within us, right? The separation of charge between the negatively charged water directly on the collagen and this positively charged water zone directly outside creates this separation of charge, just like the separation of charge in a nine volt battery. And there's potential energy there, as well as this repository of free electrons that can be transmitted and transported throughout the body where there is an energy deficiency. This is an absolutely brilliant, incredible system in the body that isn't often talked about in science. This ability of collagen and the water that's lining it to serve as a reservoir for energy to be shuttled throughout the body where it's needed. Biophysicist Mei Wan Ho talked about this as a redox pile, right? This storage of energy for our mitochondria to use and to create energy where there is an energy deficiency. Because we know from the work of Douglas Wallace and his colleagues that any dip in mitochondrial voltage or ATP production is going to lead and be associated with every modern disease out there. So, Tending to this collagen matrix and the water inside of us is really important. I talk about this a lot in my courses and my practitioner training, but some easy ways to support this network include going outside, putting our feet on the earth, putting our hands on a tree, anything that is embedded in the surface of the earth and this negative charge, the sea of free electrons that is lining the earth that has the capacity to charge this collagen network, making sure that we're hydrated, making sure that we're moving, making sure that we're getting safe exposure to natural light throughout the day charges this system, allows it to build up that reservoir of electrons and energy that can be used to quench inflammation, pain, and symptoms throughout the body. If you like this information, stay tuned for more.